Hello again and welcome. This one's going to be a bit wobbly I'm afraid in reflections. So I'm going to be moving around the tank as it were. This is the going to be his main home. You can see the shells he has in there. And just look how much sand and I've actually had to pull a little bit of this down to use to try and get right into the corner there to clean a little bit of algae off of the glass. It's a phenomenal amount of sand there alone. And then we went around the side here and we now have lots of sand being removed from under that rock just there in that little cave. Now if you look along the side of the glass there as you can see that great black strip is part of the bracing on the bottom. That's how deep down he's gone and there isn't any sand to speak of at the other end at all. And yet, it's about three inches in there to start with. He's moved it all. He's had a little go around there, but not gone too far. And then <laughs> the other day, he was pulling up sand from here like it was going out of fashion and pushing it into that part of the rock there, which is where Ginger the Midas Blenny likes to go and sit. There is actually a hole under there and he's completely covered it up which the, <laughs> the Midas Blenny used to go into so he can't go in there now. But the Midas Blenny still goes under the rock and he perches anyway. But that's one of his little beds gone. And he's moved all this sand from here all the way along there, loads and loads of it completely blocked in his entrance from what was his first home I believe if I remember rightly, first or second home. And then around the side here, again, that's a bracing bar at the bottom, he's taken all of this sand great mound of it here. Let's have a quick look around the back, don't get a chance to have a look too much although I can see from side to side. But very, very, very active, and that's where the Blenny now hides out. There, you can just see him potentially. He likes to sit there, particularly when the bubble scrubbing's on. He goes in there, he enjoys watching all the bubbles go by. Beautiful green tip torch, just a beauty. one of the zoas there, the green. Another one there, out of the flow. Still see we've got lots of uh, brown diatoms moving over to bits of algae now. You can see green in there. Another one of the zoas there, blue one. He's beginning to show colour. And I can't pronounce the one behind it. It's one of the, the orange encrusting ones. Down to here. Another one with an orange centre, can't see the rest of it, but he's at least opening up. Quite a few heads on him, but incredibly tiny. Not the size of these beauties, and these, these to me look good. They were quite cheap in the scheme of things, but they look good when they open up. Goniapora, pink I think, rather than red. Nice. The hammers there, beautiful colours. Look at that popping. The lights are ramping up still. I have to have had to move the rainbow trapeophilia there because on the sand bed the goby was just every time I sat it up there the goby was taking all the sand away from underneath it and of course it was continually tipping over. <laughs> I know some people don't like the um, orange spot goby, or diamond spot goby sand sifting goby. I think it's one of, it is probably to me the best sand sifting goby out there. But they don't like them because of this where they keep moving all the sand bed around. But to me that's all just part of it. It really is. There's the papaya clove opening nicely with one of the hermit crabs there still in his original surf shell. Over to, look at that. Beautiful.
Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Mustard yellow. Gold ish. Beautiful. He seems to like it there. Got to open it a little bit more again. As I say, the, the lights are ramping up at the moment. There we are, just a short one. Everything is still fine. I gave the uh, the filter pads and the, the reefer yesterday, the skimmer, a darn good clean. That skimmer is absolutely phenomenal for the amount of muck that it pulls out. I don't think, in all honesty, I need any filter sop. I think the skimmer would do the lot. The minus bloody ginger there, out and about all the time hunting stuff down in the water column. He has a little bite at the rocks, a little nip at the rocks on the odd occasion, so I don't know what he's getting there, whether he's found any of the copy pods. The little flame um, scooter blenny still out and about and around, non-stop as well, which is lovely. But everything is fine. But say, hey, the goby, magnificent. If you have watched this far, Thank you. I hope you find it a little bit entertaining or of interest. And I'll see you on the next one.